Good morning, Pre-K. Guess who's with us today? Wilbur. And look at that tail. Remember yesterday? He tied a string to it. He tried really hard to spin a web, but all he did was fall down on his snout. So, now we have Wilbur to spend time with us while we're reading. So let's get to it. Wilbur is a very good listener, so you be a very good listener today. This is my favorite chapter in the whole book. This chapter is called An Explosion. Here is Charlotte. If you'll remember before Wilbur went to sleep yesterday in our last chapter, Charlotte told him she was going to figure out how to save him and that she did her very best thinking that she went to the top of her web and hung upside down. So there she is in the top of her web, thinking about how she can save Wilbur. An explosion. Day after day, the spider waited, head down for an idea to come to her. Hour by hour, she sat motionless, deep in thought, having promised Wilbur that she would save his life. She was determined to keep that promise. Charlotte was naturally patient. She knew from experience that if she waited long enough, a fly would come into her web. So she felt sure that if she thought long enough about Wilbur's problem, an idea would come to her mind. Finally, one morning towards the middle of July, the idea came. Why, how perfectly simple, she said to herself. The way to save Wilbur's life is to play a trick on Zuckerman. If I can fool a bug, thought Charlotte, I can surely fool a man. People are not as smart as bugs. Hmm. Wilbur walked into his yard just at that moment. What are you thinking about, Charlotte? He asked. I was just thinking, said the spider, that people are very gullible. What does gullible mean? Easy to fool, said Charlotte. That's a mercy, replied Wilbur. And he lay down in the shade of his fence and was fast to sleep. The spider, however, stayed wide awake, gazing affectionately at him and making plans for his future. Summer was half gone. She knew she didn't have much time. That morning, just as Wilbur fell asleep, Avery Arable wandered into the Zuckerman's front yard, followed by Fern Avery. And Avery was carrying a live frog in his hand. I guess he fished him out of the pond. Fern had a crown of daisies on her in her hair, and the children ran for the kitchen. Just in time for a piece of blueberry pie, said Miss Zuckerman. That's my favorite. I love blueberry pie. Look at my frog, said Avery, placing the frog on the drain board and holding out his hand for pie. Take that thing out of here, said Miss Zuckerman. He's hot, said Fern. He's almost dead, that frog. He is not, said Avery. He lets me scratch him between the eyes. The frog jumped and landed in Miss Zuckerman's dishpan full of soapy water. You're getting your pie on you, said Fern. Can I look for eggs in the hen house and eat it? Run outdoors, both of you, and don't bother the hens. It's getting all over everything, shouted Fern. His pie's all over his front. Come on, frog, cried Avery, and he scooped up his frog. The frog kicked splashy soapy water into the blueberry pie. Another crisis, groaned Fern. The children ran to the barn. Mr. Zuckerman had the best swing in the county. It was a straight, long piece of heavy rope tied to the beam over the north doorway, and at the bottom end of the rope was a fat knot to sit on. It was arranged so that you could swing without being pushed. You climbed a ladder to the hayloft and then holding on to the rope, you stood at the edge, you looked down and were scared and dizzy. Then you straddled the knot so that it acted as a seat. Then you got up all your nerve, took a deep breath and jumped. For a second, you seemed to be falling to the barn floor far below, but then suddenly the rope would began to catch you and you would sail through the barn door out barn door going a mile a minute with the wind rustling in your eyes and ears and hair and then you would zoom upward into the sky 
and look up at the clouds and the rope would twist and you would twist and turn with the rope. And then you would drop down, down, down out of the sky and come sailing back into the barn, almost to the hayloft. Then sail out again, not quite so far this time. Then in again, not quite so high. Then out, then in, then out. And then in, and then you jump off and fall down and let somebody else try it. Mothers for miles around worried about Zuckerman's swing. They feared some child would fall off, but no child ever did. Children almost always hang on to things tighter than their parents think they will. Avery put the frog in his pocket and climbed to the hayloft. Last time I swung in the swing, I almost crashed into a barn swallow, he yelled. Take that frog out, yelled Fern. Avery straddled the rope and jumped. He sailed out through the door, the frog and all, and into the sky, frog and all, and then back into the barn. Your tongue's purple screen, Fran, so's yours, cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay inside my dress. It itches, called Fern. Scratch it, yelled Avery as he sailed back. It's my turn, said Fern. Jump off. Fern's got the itch, sang Avery. When he jumped off, he threw the swing in, up to his sister. She shut her eyes tight and jumped, and she felt that dizzy drop and the supporting lift of the swing. And when she opened her eyes, she was looking up into the blue sky and was about to fly back through the door. They took turns for an hour. When the children grew tired of swinging, they went down towards the pasture. They picked raspberries and ate them. Their tongues turned from purple to red. Fern bit into a raspberry that had a bad tasting bug inside it and got discouraged. Avery found what an empty candy box and put his frog in it. The frog seemed tired after his morning in the swing. The children walked slowly up towards the barn. Let's build a tree house, said Avery. I want to live in a tree with my frog. Here's a picture of the barn swing. That to me looks like so much fun. That's a big swing. And there's Avery up there. That's where you jump from way up in the top of the hayloft. I'm going to visit Wilbur, Fern announced. They climbed the fence in the lane and walked towards the pig pen. Wilbur heard them coming and got up. Avery noticed the spider's web and coming closer, he saw Charlotte. Hey, look at that big spider. It's tremendous. Leave it alone, said Fern. You've got a frog. Isn't that enough? That's a fine spider and I am going to capture it, said Avery. He took the cover off the candy box and then he picked up a stick. I'm going to knock that old spider into this box, he said. Wilbur's heart almost stopped when he saw what was going on. This might be the end of Charlotte if that boy succeeded in catching her. You stop it, Avery cried Fern. Avery put one leg over the fence of the pig pen. He was about to raise his stick to hit Charlotte when he lost his balance. He swayed and toppled and landed on the edge of Wilbur's trough. The trough tipped up and then it came down with a slap. The goose egg was right underneath. Oh. There was a dull explosion as the egg broke and then a horrible smell. Fern screamed. Avery jumped to his feet. The air was filled with the terrible gases and smells from that rotten egg. Templeton, who'd been resting in his home, scuttled away into the barn. Good night, screamed Avery. Good night. What a stink. Let's get out of here. Fern was crying. She held her nose and ran towards the house, and Avery ran after her, holding his nose. Charlotte felt greatly relieved to see him go. It had been a narrow escape. Here's Avery, where he lost his balance and he fell on the trough. Right here, this little dot, that is the rotten egg. And you can just see the tail and the back end of Templeton going back in his hole trying to get away from the smell. <laughs> Later that morning, the animals came up from the pasture, the sheep, the lambs, the gander, the goose, and even the goslings. There were many complaints about the awful smell. 
and Wilbur had to tell the story over and over again about how the Arable boy had tried to capture Charlotte and how the smell of the broken egg drove him away just in time. It was that rotten goose egg that saved Charlotte's life, said Wilbur. The goose was proud of her share in the adventure. I'm delighted that egg never hatched, she garbled. Templeton, of course, was miserable over the loss of his beloved egg, but he couldn't resist boasting. It pays to say things, he said in his surly voice. A rat never knows when something is going to come in handy. I never throw anything away. Well, said one of the lambs, this whole business is all well and good for Charlotte, but what about the rest of us? That smell is unbearable. Who wants to live in a barn that is perfumed with rotten egg? Oh, don't worry, you'll get used to it, said Templeton. He sat up and pulled wisely at his long whiskers and then crept away to pay a visit to the dump. When Lurvy showed up at lunchtime carrying a pail of food for Wilbur, he stopped short a few paces from the pig pen. He sniffed the air and made a face. What in thunder, he said. Setting the pail down, he picked up the stick that Avery had dropped and pried the trough up. Ah, rats, he said. Phew, I might have known a rat would make a nest under this trough. How I hate a rat. And Lurvy dragged Wilbur's trough across the yard and kicked some dirt into the rat's nest, bearing the broken egg and all of Templeton's other possessions. Then he picked up the pail. Wilbur stood drooling with hunger, Lurvy poured, Wilbur grunted, he gulped and sucked and sucked and gulped, making swishing, whooshing noises, anxious to get everything at once. It was a delicious meal, skim milk, wheat middlings, leftover pancakes, half a donut, the rind of a summer squash, two pieces of stale toast, a third of a ginger snap, a fishtail, one orange peel, and several noodles from a noodle soup. Mm an ancient jelly roll, and a spoonful of raspberry jello. Wilbur ate heartily. He planned to leave half a noodle and a few drops of milk for Templeton. Then he remembered that the rat had been useful in saving Charlotte's life, and Charlotte was trying to save his life, so he left a whole noodle instead of a half. <laughs> now that the broken egg was buried, the air cleared, the barn smelled good again, and the afternoon passed, and the evening came, and the shadows lengthened. Astride her web, Charlotte sat moodily eating a horse fly and thinking about the future. After a while, she bestirred herself. She descended to the center of the web and there she began to cut some of her lines. She worked slowly but steadily while the other creatures drowsy. None of the others, not even the goose, noticed what she, that she was at work. Deep in a soft bed, Wilbur snoozed. Over in their favorite corner, the goslings whistled a night song. Charlotte tore quite a section out of her web, leaving an open space in the middle. Then she started weaving something to take the place of the thread she'd removed. When Templeton got back from the dump around midnight, the spider was still at work. That is the end of that chapter. The next chapter is called The Miracle. So we've had an explosion, now we're gonna have a miracle. It's gonna be pretty exciting. So, Wilbur says stay tuned for the next chapter and we'll see you tomorrow.